Lawrence Executive Consulting is a risk management firm based here in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, what we do is provide uh, services to both uh, public and private organizations and also to the general public to advise them on specific um, uh, subject matters such as uh, personal safety um, as well as um, uh, physical security um, with their businesses. The back part of our facility here, we do have a training area in which uh, some local law enforcement and also some civilians who want to learn the art of Escrima um, uh, come here to train. Uh, I'm the, what they call the Punam Guru, the, uh, the lead instructor in our system called Belize Pegada Escrima. They learn everything from uh, the use of uh, the stick for stick defense and stick fighting, knife defense, and also hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, we also, because we're part of law enforcement, we teach them um, how to manipulate uh, uh, handguns, long guns, um, how to safely use them in critical scenarios. One of the, our missions here in, in, at Lord's Executive Consulting is to show officers that there are other alternatives uh, to the use of force chain in which that they can resolve an issue uh, a lot more productive other than going to the taser, the handgun, or the baton. There's other means of dealing with that. Uh, we've had an incident uh, several months ago here in Los Angeles in which that uh, a, um, a gentleman was uh, inebriated, uh, had a knife in his possession, and was shot several times by police. Um, one of the comments made by Chief Beck, um, the Los Angeles Police Department Chief of Police, was that they don't train their officers in, that, in taking knives away from suspects. Well, that in itself is problematic because there will be a certain time in which that you will have to, as a law enforcement officer, take knives away from individuals. For example, if the individual was, say, a 95-year-old female, um, you're not going to necessarily shoot her or throw her down to the ground in, in a very aggressive manner. There are ways of taking her and, and disarming uh, people out there in the streets, but we found that law enforcement is taking uh, extra steps in doing that. So we've looked at different use of force policies within the state of California and identified uh, that there are other ways of uh, resolving issues without being so heavy-handed or using specific weapons that they have in, at their immediate possession. Um, we've modified, for example, different holds, different uh, search techniques, and um, also uh, uh, used uh, a variety of different command presence, the mere being there to persuade individuals to basically give up. So we've identified these uh, processes and, and somewhat codified it into our system in which uh, we see that be very productive for a lot of these law enforcement um, organizations um, uh, to utilize in, in a daily uh, pro daily manner. And what's interesting is uh, uh, we have a number of law enforcement officers that come here to train. They've actually taken upon themselves to look at other alternatives uh, to what they have been taught in their department to quail or diffuse a, a very hostile scenario. Uh, for example, um, we had, uh, I was with an agency approximately about three months ago in which that there was an inebriated gentleman um, that did, want, did not want to necessarily comply with police. He held his hands and then, and then clenched, held it up close to his side, but wasn't really uh, aggressive at that point. One officer got behind him and then had five officers on top of the individuals uh, basically in a dog pile. Uh, there was injury towards the suspect, uh, the suspect was bleeding. From the get-go, the culture in law enforcement would accept that, hey, that was a, a justified uh, arrest. But uh, there was an officer there that I was able to pull aside and show him a different technique in which it would have just taken a half a second to do and it would have solved the, end of, uh, the problem without the suspect being injured. He was so elated about that and was so happy that now um, we have that officer training with us. So yeah, we have other um, solutions to these complicated issues of use of force. We'd love to share with our organizations, and we're doing the best that we can to try and spread that news to the different agencies all over the nation. 
our, our faith, I should say specifically my faith, yeah. is, uh, is, is probably the foundation of our organization. Um, Lord's Executive Consulting was named after my faith. So we use that as, uh, as our, say, our mission statement and our understanding of what our directive are in order to um, carry on with our daily uh, task. Uh, I'm a very devoted Catholic and I'm, I'm very active in my church and with that solid understanding we exercise that with everything that we do within our organization. The guys that come here that may not be strong in their faith are slowly trying to understand the goodness of what uh, our, our, my faith has to offer. So they live it, they learn it, they live it, and now they evangelize it. And we're very strong in that. It's one of our criteria that we have within our organization. Um, we're very straightforward, and we tell, we tell the individual, hey, this is what we believe in. We have nothing to hide here. Um, if we give them an option to, it's not for them, it's not for them, but this is what we exercise. And from our experiences now, is that we've come up with a very solid core of people here that are do nothing but good for the general public. Yeah. It's just amazing, and um, we have a fun time doing it as well. So our faith is everything. Um, Patricia introduced you to the Oath Keepers. Now, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know anything about the Oath Keepers uh, until at that point. But uh, coming from a law enforcement background, I saw a lot of things that should not have been happening. Um, I saw things that uh, I had very strong opinion against, but was not empowered to do so. But what I was empowered to do, so I just didn't realize it at the time. As the years gone by, I kind of carried on myself and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to uh, do things the right way and do my part in, in expressing my faith and my practices in, in my organization for the good of the, the law enforcement or the first responder. Um, so I, 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 I try to do an outreach or have an outreach with these uh, first responders, but I've been, I've been met with a very strong resistance. Um, and I thought that the first responders weren't just into it. They were not like that at all until I met the Oath Keepers. Now the Oath Keepers had the same similar views that I did. were very uh, opinionated in what they understood was correct based on their understanding of the oath that they had these first responders have taken. So it meshed with my ideals and, and now I am an active member of the Oath Keepers.